If we want to alkylate at the alpha carbon of a carbonyl compound, ketone or aldehyde, for example, we know how to do this straightforwardly using LDA at the less substituted position. We just treat with LDA, generate that less substituted enolate. Here an, an example is shown right here. And then we treat with the alkyl halide and boom, we get a new carbon-carbon bond at the less substituted alpha position. The fact of the matter is trying to do this with the more substituted enolate is fraught with problems. Um, because there's a little bit of unreacted uh, ketone around under these conditions, while ideally we'll get mostly the more substituted product, all kinds of other things can happen. We can get overalkylation, deprotonation can happen here, we can get, get some alkylation over here, for example, a benzyl group could be installed over here, and just bad things can happen. This doesn't work very well. The acetoacetic ester synthesis is a much superior alternative, and we're going to move into talking about that synthesis and a related process called the malonic ester synthesis that does an awesome job of synthesizing these more substituted, more alpha substituted products. If we want to alkylate on the more substituted side, the acetoacetic or the malonic ester synthesis, as the other one is called, is the way to do it. And the fact of the matter is, too, LDA is actually not that old. It was only developed around 1970, but by that time, enolate chemistry was very, very well developed and very, very well understood. And this is because people had been generating stabilized enolates with not one but two electron withdrawing groups attached to the acidic carbon for decades prior to the development of lithium diisopropyl amide. And it's these stabilized enolates that we can really take advantage of for generation of highly substituted at the alpha position uh, carbonyl compounds. And the first one we're going to look at is called the malonic ester synthesis. The malonic ester synthesis makes use of malonic or malonate esters. Malonic acid is a compound with two carboxyl groups, two CO2H groups, linked to a CH2 group in the middle. So here we see one carboxyl group, that's CH2 in the middle, and the other carboxyl group. When those CO2H groups, when the H's are replaced with alkyl groups, then we get a malonate ester. So this, for example, is dimethyl malonate. And this is acidic enough at this sort of doubly alpha carbon, right? It's alpha to two carbonyl groups that we can just use an alkoxide base to deprotonate at that position completely. Notice this is not a reversible arrow at all. This is a complete deprotonation. So for dimethyl malonate, that pKa is about 14. That's going to be acidic enough to be more or less completely deprotonated by something like methoxide anion. And this enolate that we end up with is stabilized by a second electron withdrawing group. This is what we mean by a stabilized enolate. Now one quick note here about generating these stabilized enolates of malonate esters. It is very important, and this is also going to be true in the acetoacetic ester synthesis, that the alkoxide base used matches the alkoxy group of the ester. So notice here we have a dimethyl malonate ester. It is very important that we use methoxide here. If we don't do that, then the alkoxide base can displace the methoxide anion built into the starting ester. That's called transesterification, and then we get a nasty mixture of products. So this is actually important to make sure that that alkoxide matches the alkoxy group built into the malonate ester. Okay, once we've generated that stabilized enolate, it's still quite nucleophilic at the carbon between the two carbonyl groups. This is still an enolate after all, and so it's, it's still nicely, you know, negatively charged at this carbon, nucleophilic at this carbon. So if we treat with an alkyl halide, and here it needs to be primary or methyl to ensure that the SN2 reaction goes as planned, we don't want any elimination, we can get an SN2 reaction to occur through electron flow like this. So there's a new bond formed between this doubly alpha carbon and the R group, and the leaving group, which is typically something like chloride or bromide, or maybe a tosylate or other sulfonate leaving group, departs with a pair of electrons. So this has established a new carbon R bond, carbon-carbon bond, at the doubly alpha position between the two carbonyl groups. We can actually repeat this again. Notice that there's another alpha hydrogen right here. 
So if we treat with the second equivalent of methoxide base, sodium methoxide, and then add potentially even a different alkyl halide, here I've labeled it R2X, we can establish another carbon-carbon bond to a different alkyl group R2. And there again, we want to make sure that that group is primary or methyl in the alkyl halide or, or pseudo halide used. So we've generated a really highly substituted product here with two R groups connected to the alpha carbon. This is really only going to be useful, though, if we can deal with these sort of two carbonyl groups. The synthetic method is pretty limited if we're stuck at just a substituted malonate, right? And the beauty of this synthesis is what happens next. It's actually possible to take that substituted malonic ester or malonate ester and hydrolyze it with loss of one of the carboxyl groups. And so notice here we're starting with that substituted malonate ester with our new R group at the doubly, doubly alpha position. If I treat this with aqueous acid and heat it, I can actually get to just the substituted carboxylic acid product. So what has happened here is one of the carboxyl groups has been replaced with H, hydrolysis has occurred, ester hydrolysis, and a CO2 has apparently disappeared since there was transiently at least, a CO2H group here after the hydrolysis, CO2 has disappeared. So two things are happening in this treatment of the malonate ester with aqueous acid and heat. Ester hydrolysis, and we've seen that before, we understand that as a nucleophilic acyl substitution process where water, the nucleophile, is displacing essentially an alcohol leaving group. And decarboxylation, and this is a little bit new, but we're really going to unpack the decarboxylation to make sure that it makes sense mechanistically because this only works for malonate esters and beta keto esters in particular, and there's a good reason for that that we'll touch on as we dig into the mechanism of this decarboxylation. So really cool transformation in that the final product we get here looks like we alkylated acetic acid, right? If you imagine this R group was not here, that looks like acetic acid. Alkylating acetic acid is not something you can ordinarily do with a base like LDA due to the strong acidity of the uh, carboxylic acid proton relative to something like diisopropyl amine. Um, but that's exactly what we've done here, and it's a fantastic route to alpha-substituted carboxylic acids. And keep in mind that we could have a second R group here if desired right, by applying sort of the iterative process with two equivalents of methoxide base, or alkoxide base more generally. All right, so let's talk about this decarboxylation. So the ester hydrolysis occurs at both ester groups, and we get this dicarboxylic acid right here. It's a substituted malonic acid derivative. I'm going to draw that a slightly different way, showing this acidic hydrogen explicitly on one of the carboxyl groups and lining that up near the other carbonyl oxygen, near the carbonyl oxygen of the other carboxyl group. What can happen here is an internal proton transfer with elimination of carbon dioxide. So the electron flow is actually cyclic. Here I'm showing the CO double bond grabbing that proton. The OH electrons break and establish a new CO double bond, and the CC electrons slide over into a new pi bond. And if we pay attention to kind of the left half here first, what we're generating here is an enol. Right? What we're generating here is, is a um, enediol, we might say, the enol of a carboxylic acid is what we're generating. And then the right half, well, that's CO2. One CO double bond is already there. We're creating a second CO double bond. That is CO2. And so notice here what, what has happened is one of the carboxyl groups has been essentially eliminated. You can kind of think of this as an internal E2 elimination type of step and CO2 is eliminated. And the heat is there to ensure that we're taking advantage of entropy. CO2 is a gas, flies right out of the reaction vessel, never to return, and we get stuck at this enol. And this rapidly tautomerizes under the acidic reaction conditions, right? We've got an acid catalyst that can do this to form the sort of keto form, the familiar keto form of the carboxylic acid product. So aqueous acid, heat converts the malonate ester into a malonic acid, first of all, and then decarboxylation gives ultimately just a substituted carboxylic acid. What we're seeing on the bottom of the slide here is a summary of the method in all of its glory. This is the malonic ester synthesis. We start with a malonic ester, dimethylmalonate, diethylmalonate. Actually, the alkyl, the alkoxy groups of the malonate don't matter a ton um, because those will get hydrolyzed off 
and the synthesis eventually anyway. But we do want to make sure that that alkoxide base we use to deprotonate here first matches the alkoxy groups in the starting ester. So we use that base to deprotonate, treat with an alkyl halide, SN2, and then the acidic hydrolysis and heat step does two things, ester hydrolysis and decarboxylation, and the result is a substituted carboxylic acid. And what it looks like overall is alkylation of acetic acid, not something we could do any other way. The malonic ester synthesis in that respect is, is highly unique. It's a fantastic way to make substituted carboxylic acids.